Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, we are jumping into uh, an awesome topic and I've got an awesome guest here too. Um, this is all about how to maximize your home value as you're getting ready to sell. And there's so many different things that we think about when we're doing that, right? Um, and one of the one of the things that people sometimes struggle with um, for many reasons, which we will cover, is doing renovations. Um, some people jump right into it, but a lot of people really hesitate there for a few reasons. And so I'm super happy to have Jason Meyer here. He's the owner of Renovation Sales Denver. Jason, welcome. Thanks, Jacob. Good to be here. Yeah, happy to have you here. I'm excited, man. Um, man, I, I I can tell you just, uh, I, I think everyone's gonna be super excited to hear from you and and just your, your expertise on this. I mean, the way that I even um, came into contact with you was uh, walking through a house that you actually redid and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably restate it when we get to the slide, but man, we uh, got maybe three steps in and my buyer was like, I want this house. <laughs> like, what, what is it going to take? Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've got some really cool information to go over here. So let me go ahead and, uh, share the slides and we'll, we'll just jump right in. Cool. Yeah. No, it's a, you, you tell the, that story and every time I just I, like it, like it, it warms my body. Like it, it's just, uh, it's so cool to hear that. And that's, it, it's, it's, that's what we shoot for when, when we work on properties is that somebody walks in and they just, they're in love with the property. And, and that's, yeah. that's how we get these properties sold. Um, and, and, you know, turning it around for clients and they see the offers come in, it's just, you know, they go through, all that work to get there. And, and, you know, then we, we, they see the offers and, and it's, it's awesome. So I appreciate that. And I love that story every time you tell it. All right. I was having a little trouble there, but I think I've got it here. Are you seeing that Jason? Yep. I got it. All right. Cool. All right so yeah, let's, let's jump right into this. And um, so, yeah, I'm Jacob Stark. I'm a realtor with HC real estate here in town. Um, and I've uh, I actually got into real estate uh, via investing. Uh, so I was doing some flips and some rentals with some business partners. Uh, eventually got into short term rental. Um, big long story there that we won't go into here. If uh, anyone ever wants to hear that, give me a call. But uh, definitely gave me a really good, um, uh, just a good, uh, I guess, experience getting into being a full time realtor because I just I've got a lot of experience in terms of you know how do you build value for buyers um, and sellers. And so that's um, that's been something that Jason and I uh, have really kind of clicked on as well because he's he's got some similar experiences there too. Um, and then Jason, why don't you give a little bit more about your background? Yeah, so uh, Jason Meyer, uh, like Jacob said, I'm the owner of Renovation Sales Denver. Uh, we're, we're a national franchise, and, and really what we do uh, is is we work with uh, realtors and their clients to prep properties to sell um, and, and to, to maximize that sale value. So I've been doing this for, uh, this is my third year now. Um, prior to that, uh, I was also investing and flipping properties. Um, and, and before that, I spent uh, almost two decades in financial mm -hmm. services. So I sort of uh, took, a, took a, a different career path when I turned 40. Um, and I feel like starting a business and, and changing things, but I love it. Like I, <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, I, again, man, I, I just, I love the construction and, and it, it's, you know, I, I don't ever really think about it until, until the project's done, but just when people are like, gosh, this place looks amazing and, and you see how it sells. It's just, that's kind of my drive um, is to, to create these amazing houses and, and help people out too. Um, Cause there's, awesome. there's a big aspect of that. There's something that just so cool, like so tangible, right. About what you do uh, when you go from like, when we go to some of these before and after pictures, right. I mean, that's gotta be super yeah. gratifying. Oh, dude. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like building spreadsheets and, and uh, doing all <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, it was pretty <laughs> gratifying when I could figure out how to add like two columns together. But um, when you, when you look at a project and, and you've spent four or five weeks there and you see what it was and you see what it is now, like that's, that's really, um, that's kind of, that's what I do it for. I mean, it's yeah. that like tangible, wow, we, we created something um, really quick and, and really beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, let's hop right into it. Our, our agenda, you know, I think most folks know from, you know, some of the, the marketing that we did before this, um, you know, first we're going to cover off, like, why, why is this even important to, you know, consider some home improvements? So we'll, we'll cover a few, um, just a few points there. 
Uh, how do you pick the right updates for the highest profit? I'm sure that's one of the things that people worry the most about is just like, you know, I want to make sure I'm not just, you know, spending money for the sake of spending it. Uh, how can you get all the work done without paying until or, uh, and you pay at closing? Um, that's actually a reality, uh, um, something that that we offer here. Um, what are the three most important steps before we take photos? You know, so many people just think of, well, you know, these days in the in this market, you can just, you know, take photos, throw it on the MLS and it's going to sell, you know, the first weekend. And there's, you know, certainly was a time and place where that was kind of true, not totally true, but, you know, um, things did get a little crazy there and, and things were going really fast. But, you know, buyers have definitely taken a step back and um, they're a little more conservative unless you can draw them in emotionally. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then, and then just some next steps, if anyone's interested, um, whether you're watching this live now or um, you're seeing this uh, as a recording, um, I mean, Jason and I, we're, we've built businesses and, uh, you know, we're going to be here for the long haul. So, um, yeah, if you're seeing this a year from now, we, we hope that you'll reach out if you're interested. So I'll probably uh, have yeah. more gray hair in a year, but yeah. <laughs> man, I, I don't know if I can fit more gray hair, but my girls <laughs> keep figuring out how to we're, more. We got a little less. Yeah. That's why I always wear a hat. <laughs> right uh so why consider home improvements for, uh before you sell and i i think it you know you got to come back to like what is your goal you know if you're thinking about selling what what is your goal and um you know believe it or not not everybody is worried about just the top you know getting the top dollar do a lot of people want top dollar does everybody want top dollar sure but at the end of the day there are some compromises that people are willing to make and so you got to really think through is is getting the top dollar is that my most important priority or um do you want to try to uh are, are you worried about doing showings is that going to be more difficult for you because of family situation or you know different situations that that kind of make that difficult so you want to really minimize time on market um do you just want the shortest amount of time possible period like you know you don't really care if it's top dollar if it's a little less than that you just want to sell it now or, or do you just want to be totally hands off, sign something and be done? I mean, there's there's a lot of ways that you can go about selling your home. Uh, you can certainly go give a cash offer, but obviously you're going to end up paying like, you know, a convenience fee. You know, they're not going to give you market value for that, but the convenience is going to be super high. So you got to you got to think through this because making improvements is not for everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you just you want to make sure that you understand your uh, your top priority there. Now, if you are saying, I, I really do want to get top dollar here and I'm willing to do a little bit of planning and, and all that to make sure that it happens, well, this, this webinar is definitely for you. So uh, let's continue through here. Now, Jason, I, I know that um, you, I mean, you deal with, with clients and doing renovations and all that. Um, yep. I mean, walk us through, obviously, they, hopefully they don't, they don't you know, experience this with you, obviously, but a lot of people want to avoid renovations. Like, what do you think they're kind of worried about and why, why do they want to avoid those? I, you know, there's so many hassles um, that, that I think people have. Uh, that, that they're, some of them are very valid and some of them are kind of, you know, they, they just don't know what they don't know. And, and so I think a lot of the time, um, people just first off, it's like, well, I don't even have a contractor. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's like you, you've got to have you have a dentist and you have a doctor, but everybody thinks they need to have a contractor that that they can call. Um, you know, ninety percent of my business is is working with realtors, and mm -hmm. if you're working with a, a realtor like Jacob or somebody else who who understands what what I do, you know, there's there's one objection gone right there. Like you, you've got a contractor. Um, we're a national company, um, and, and we, we do the work. Um, the second is, well, okay, I don't even know what to update. Um, again, you know, working with a, a realtor and, and working with somebody like myself, um, who, you know, I, I'm in properties every day. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I, I not only, um, run a, a renovation company that, that focuses on, um, selling homes, um, but I'm also an investor. So I, I, I live the life, 
Um, I go into properties all the time and I, I know what to look for. And, and working with somebody like Jacob, we can we can walk through the house and say, you know what, this kitchen is okay. Like it's not it's not the worst of your concerns, but your carpet needs uh, needs to be replaced, or, or we need mm -hmm. to uh, we got to do a little bit of work in the bathroom, or hey, these lights yeah, we we got to we got to change the lights out. So knowing what to do, I, I think, is the second piece. Um, and then after you sort of get them on board with with making the changes, um, it, it becomes a question about, <clears throat> OK, well, I, I want to redo the kitchen, but who's going to design that? Right. Um, I've got a, a designer on my staff that, that will work with me. And, and, and we actually pick all the finishes. We pick all the materials. Um, we actually source all the materials. So the homeowner doesn't really have to do anything. It, we've, we've designed working with renovation cells to be as painless as possible for, for the, for the homeowner. Um, and I think the last piece, and, and this is the, the, probably the most valid piece is I don't want to live through construction. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I get that uh, yeah. a lot of the properties that, that I work on are, are empty properties. So, you know, the, the homeowner uh, is already gone, um, which is just an ideal, you know, that's, that's the dream for every uh, contractor is to have an empty property. But, um, if not we're quick and, and we're efficient, I can generally get a bathroom done in a week or so. <clears throat> okay. And it's because of that planning and, and it, it, it's because of what we do. So we really focus on those cosmetic updates. Um, you know, so we're not tearing down walls and we're not moving stuff. It's we're confined in that one room. I can knock a bathroom out in a week. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit stressful, but we've got it generally planned out to the point where um, it, it's it's manageable for individuals. And I've got to believe, Jason, that if if a homeowner can just plan on a schedule and the contractor can meet that schedule, like yeah. you're probably going to avoid most problems, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. let's face it, living in a construction zone, it's, it's not fun, but right. we, we do everything we can to minimize and, and plan. Um, and, you know, I, I was talking to somebody else actually today. Um, it was like, you know, a lot of contractors they're they're set up in a way that they'll come in and they'll do demo and then once demo's done they're going to get the tile guy scheduled and the tile guy is going to be there you know three days later so you've got that that two-day window um I, i've got probably four or five crews that i just stack them up and mm -hmm. and they know the process they know the drill um and and we can get in there and, and we can knock stuff out yeah that so it's planning is uh planning is is imperative for sure uh, so, you know, I, I think a lot of people, um, they, they, they tend to think that, well, you know, that one down the street sold for more money because it's, you know, way bigger or, you know, they, they kind of start to make these reasons why, mm -hmm. um, why there's a, uh, different price points. But I, I wanted to, uh, take a look at, this is actually an, an area that Jason and I are currently, uh, speaking with a seller and, um, it's just this one is so in such a tight little range. You know, if we look at the total square feet, uh, these range from anywhere from 2141 to 2348, I think, is the high on that. So, yeah. I mean, everything's like within, you know, 10 percent of each other. But the price is is far beyond that 10 percent. Right. And so um, if you were to actually click through all these, you would see there's definitely a difference between a four hundred seventy-six thousand dollar house and a six hundred ninety thousand dollar house, and it's not because of the square footage, right? Yeah. It's uh, you can see these are all um, pretty close to each other, and actually a lot of these are very similar footprints. Um, and so it comes down to you know what what does it look like, and you know like if you're looking at Zillow, you know Zestimates and different things like that, <laughs> that's great, right? I mean it's a great baseline just to kind of get to know an area, all that good stuff, but. Zillow cannot see inside the house. It, it, it doesn't know what the kitchen looks like. It doesn't know what the bathrooms look like. It doesn't know that it has pink shag carpet, you know, throughout the bedroom. It just can't know that. And so um, those are the things where I always tell my sellers, like pricing is an art and a science. You know, yeah. you can do the numbers all day and that's great. But what moves, what moves uh, the price up and down? Um, cause when you only have so much square footage, unless you're adding, you know, whatever, but like your footprint's your footprint for the most part. Right. And so, uh, you know, your price per square foot probably is going to be somewhere around the same, unless you can do something that really makes people that moves people emotionally. 
right? And going back to that, you know, that buyer that I brought through that house and, you know, within three steps, she's just thinking, I want this house. And, and that's, that's the kind of emotion that you want to build into these things. Yeah. Well, and, and I always say too, you know, I'm a contractor and, and we make houses look pretty, but I'm, I'm really in the business of eliminating objections. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when somebody walks into a house, if the first thing they see is this amazing, you know, the, the floors are beautiful and, and, you know, you've got amazing staging, not to, to get too far ahead, but you've got everything is set up. The only thing that, the only thing they have to do is fall in love with the house. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you walk into a house and it's like, oh my gosh, like, like they, they, you know, you see this over here and it's like, wow, they, you know, tried to put flooring in on their own and, and they did a terrible job. And, and all right. they see is that one little thing. And that just, it, it, it uh, snowballs into, yeah. you know, they're, they get hypercritical about everything else in the house and then they walk out and they don't offer it. Even if it's little stuff that's easy to fix. Um, that's you such eliminate a good point. Objections. That's such a good point, Jason. Like, uh, you know, if you're walking up and the exterior paint is mm -hmm. is a disaster, all right, the trim is like kind of curling <laughs> up and and all that. Yep. I feel like people, you're right. Like they're they they put their yep. guard up. Like, oh man, like this obviously this house has not been maintained. And you know, some cases it just holds true throughout, right? And like you said, they're yep. starting to stack those things up in their head, like. Okay, that's going to cost that much to do this, and and everyone's going to overestimate for the most part, right? One hundred percent. Oh man, this carpet or, be ten thousand dollars, and you know, yeah. like, different things like yeah. that. When it's probably not going to be as much, but to them, it is going to be that much, and it's going to be the emotional hassle of it all, right? And so yep. it's just a an immediate turnoff. Um, I gotta I gotta spend seven hundred thousand dollars on this brand new house, and then I have to spend another fifty thousand dollars to make it livable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this That's is the actual is. house. This is the actual house that I walked my on uh, my client walked through the one on the right. Obviously, it's the same house, believe it or not. But yep. uh, uh, Jason, you know, came in uh, with it looking like uh, the on the left, and my buyer got to walk in on the right, and you can see why. Within three steps, she was just saying, "I, I yeah, this this might be the one." Uh, now, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> she didn't get that one, but. Um, but it just shows what's what's possible here, and you know that emotional that emotional tie. Now, let's be honest. There's, uh, I mean, Jason, you've probably walked through some of these as well. Like I, I walked through some of these. Uh, I won't mention any names, but some of these large institutional investors, and you know, they might do a flip or you know some of the quick flippers, and you yep. walk through and you're like, man, this thing photoed so well. But yep. as you're walking through, you're looking at the details, and you're just like, ah, this thing needs to be flipped again. You yep. know, but when yeah. we walked through this one, I mean, obviously everything was super tight, the details on it, uh, like there was no detail missed. No, I, we, we, you know, well, I, I got the pleasure of falling in love with the house twice when I walked in it and saw like what I get to do. That was fun. Yeah. And then when I, you know, walked in like your client, I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, you know, the high quality work, um, just cause it's a flip, it doesn't mean you have to cut corners. Yeah, exactly. um, and and just because you're you're renovating before you sell doesn't mean you have to cut corners um, because people notice that. Um, I, I I walk into houses all the time, or I, I look at them on Zillow and and whatever, but I can tell the house that's been flipped just just by the color palette. Um, uh -huh. I can tell a house that's been flipped. Um, you you can't tell, and I, I keep on saying flip, but renovated. Uh, you know, th there's not many people that renovate to sell yet. Uh, we're changing that, but right. um, you know, when when you walk into this house, you don't know other than the fact that you saw the the it was um, on the market for a little while um, and off the market and back on. You don't know that it was a that it was a, a flipper that we did renovations because of the the sort of those details that you know, the grout, like the, the just little stuff everywhere throughout the house, you can't cut corners. Um, I, I get a little OCD, um, with stuff and, and it's a good trait to have, but it is. Um, in your profession, it's absolutely, it is. And, and I don't want it to, my biggest goal is when we renovate a house that somebody doesn't walk in and be like, this was a flip. And yeah. had your client not known that I, I'm assuming that you knew that, that it was a flip. Right. You wouldn't have known if you just walked in and be like, man, somebody took really good care of this house um, and updated it regularly. The thing the thing is, Jason, like, I mean, we were in, you know, this was this is in an established neighborhood. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's obviously not new construction, 
But, and, and I mean this in the best possible way, like it felt like you were walking through a model home of new construction, right? And it just, it had yeah. that feel. And I mean, let's be honest, those builders, they spend a lot of money to make those model homes look and feel and smell um, the way, just the, just the perfect way so that you fall in love with those model homes and then go sign yeah. a contract to wait 12 months to get a house, right? So, and the house that you get is not the house that you walk through. Um, uh, true, God. very true. I, and it's, yeah. unless, unless you're willing to come in with a lot of add-ons. Well, ex exactly. And, and side note, it's funny because my wife uh, is an interior designer as well. And she works for a company that that does a lot of the staging and, and they pick out the finishes in these model homes. So oh, yeah. um, it's, it's you, you walk into these model homes and it's like, gosh, I want to get this. And, and you don't because um, it costs $300,000 to upgrade uh, to get to where it's at. Yeah. This is, we, we want to, we want to, you know, and, and not every project is as big as this, uh, is this yeah. house, but um, we want to give buyers that like, wow, we want this house um, feel and, and it's available to everybody, right? Like this isn't something that is exclusive to, to, you know, top tier people. We do, we do this for, for all ranges of houses. Um yeah, so I mean, that's, it can be there. a really good point there, Jason. I mean, this one, you know, 150,000, but you mentioned like you've done plenty of projects that are, you know, in that 20 to 30,000 range, right? Yeah. Now, my my average project is is probably in the upper 20s to lower 30s. Um, and that's kitchens and bathrooms. That's yep. that's really what it comes down to is is if you have uh, nice kitchens and bathrooms, the the bones of the house are good. It, you're going to you're going to be off you're going to be better off than, than you were. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, speaking of, right. Um, yeah. The kitchen, I mean, the kitchen is just, it's such a yeah. great transformation there. Oh just yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And I've got a great cab cabinet manufacturer um, that I, I use those cabinets in every single property that, that I do mm -hmm. cabinets. Um, uh, you know, it's, they, they've got sort of a limited color selection um, as sort of the entry level um, we can do custom painting, which we did at this house, um, sort of elevates it a little bit. Yep. Um, and then I've got some high-end cabinets that I use as well, but um, it, the, the cabinets are great cabinets. And and it's, it's the, again, those little details. So soft closed doors and drawers, um, yeah. you know, that's what people want. I, I'm finishing a house over at uh, Colorado on I-25 right now. Well, they had nice cabinets, um, but it, and they needed painted. So we painted the cabinets uh, and then we added soft close uh, door and drawer hardware um, because those are things that people notice when they open up the cabinet door to, to look inside. Is it a is it going to slam like, you know, back in the 80s when you slammed a cabinet or <laughs> is it going to close itself gently? Um, those are those little details that that will sell. And I, it sounds silly, but those are the little details that. Just like you were saying, when you walk in and the paint is uh, is is peeling and and it just needs to be redone, people people have in their mind we're going to have to fix everything. Yeah. Soft closed cabinet doors and drawers, that in their mind they're like, hey, like we're going to be good here. It, it, yeah. it puts them at ease. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely have buyers who when they get in the kitchen, that's a test, right? Mm -hmm. Like open the drawer and then let it go, you know, yeah. uh, and yeah. you know, does it slam or does it ease in? <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I mean, I got kids that, gosh, I, I would have replaced my cabinets twice by now if they weren't soft clothes. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> like swinging on it, like, what What do we have oh, here? What's in man. there? And then It's crazy. And, and you talk about builders. I mean, we built our house uh, five years ago over in Parker, and, and we were in an apartment temporarily, and it's soft clothes, cabinet doors and drawers. And um, I just remember, like, that sound, like, of, of just cabinets closing and they're yelling at my kids not that they knew any different but right you know like stop slamming the kid you know so it's just there's little stuff man and, and people people want that they want we started off in the beginning they want move in ready yeah yeah for sure um you know we talked or well i guess we really we showed kind of on that 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 one that's uh back here you know, fifty thousand dollar reno and seventy thousand dollar profit, and I'm sure yep. some people are already putting you know one and one together here. But let's let's talk a little bit about you know what what that actually means. You know, profit. Some people you know will talk ROI. Some people are going to 
yeah. know, just use different words. But um, yeah, let's let's kind of talk through people through the numbers here. And I mean, why don't you give this a start? Sure. Yeah, no. So, I mean, the, the house on the left, I think you're going to see more profit the higher the price point is um, because it's it's easy to put in, you know, 50 to seventy five thousand dollars in a high end house. Um, and, and really if like, maybe it was just the kitchen that, that we did, which I think this particular property, um, it was just the kitchen renovation that we did. Um, you know, the, the realtor came in and, and they, you know, sort of looked and said, Hey, it's going to sell for a million and a half. Now we can put 50 in and they listed it at one six. So right off the bat, um, there was kind of that built in potential for close to 50,000 in profit. Yeah. Um, when when they um, listed and I, I these are all in a, in a different time um we, we know it's like 2020 and 2021 and 22 before rates went up but right. they got 200 over ask um you know so so you've got that high profit um even on even on the this one back here right oh chats yeah you still, no, you still we, had multiple offers and we were asking we had uh 34 showings um, between, I think they opened up Friday to, to Sunday. Um, so we had 34 showings. I think we had like 50 people through the open house. Uh, we had 10 offers and and we went 55,000 over asking. Yeah. And that was um, a month ago, right? That, that and that was, yeah, we closed, actually we closed a month ago today. Um, yeah. So this, it can still happen. Now that also kind of talks into, to, or comes into pricing strategy we could have probably listed it a little bit higher than we did. Um, but we wanted to create that. We wanted to create that sort of fury. Um, and just, you know, you, you, you start bidding um, people, you, you create the emotional attachment to the house. And once you create the emotional attachment, a good realtor is going to say, Hey, seven ten is not going to cut it. Like it, it, we're, we're higher than seven ten right now. And, and so yeah. you get these people that they just start bidding against each other and, you watch where you watch where the dominoes fall. Um, I think that's one of the, the um, I don't know, I guess I'll call it one of the more challenging things for sellers is, you know, I'll, I'll talk to them about that, that pricing, is, it's not a number, it's a strategy, right? Yeah. And if you price well, it will actually help. It's a part of your marketing, right? And, mm -hmm. and if you do, if you do a great, um, if you do a great renovation, it's got all the bells and whistles and everything's looking good. But you don't market it well. You don't, uh, you know, kind of present it well. You're, you're not staging it, and you're pricing it wrong. Like it yep. could be a total flop, and and that's you know, like you just mentioned, you know, pricing it the right way. Like the the marketing is so key, and that pricing plays such a critical role there in making sure that you are actually maximizing the attention on it online, which then turns into yeah. more showings and. And those showings, like if they if they all react the way that my client did walking through that house, you're going to get multiple offers. A hundred percent. And that's where, you know, I, I've, I'm i not a realtor, but it's I, I'm involved in, in the selling strategy um, when when they're my properties, you know, when they're not. Um, I, I you'd be fortunate to have somebody like Jacob as your agent who gets that. But, yeah, it's it's 100 percent a strategy. It's it's. And, and there's there's some risk in in doing in in pricing it some ways, but if you price it a little bit below what you want, if if a seller is willing to do that, and and you've got a great product, mm -hmm. um, if your if your target is seven and you price it at six ninety five, and, and that's a competitive price for what's out in the market, you're going to get those offers yeah. um, because you're going to get. The more eyes you can get on it, the more feet you can get through it, uh, the more people that, that you can have that are interested in it. Um, and, and I think it, it's just so powerful to, to price it the right way and have the right strategy. And you you hit on that there, uh, there too, Jason, in terms of like the the same, the, the strategy used on um, Chatswood is not the same strategy that you use on every one of them, no. right? Like you customize it just like you customize your design for the house and yeah. you know, you're looking at what is, what is the neighborhood, you know, bearing, like what, you know, what are some of those comps showing you? And we'll, we'll yep. get into that in a minute, but yeah, that's such a good point that, um, you know, what you did on, on one does not mean that you do it on all of them. No, no. And, and I mean, the, the house on Chatswood, that was, we had to touch every surface that, that house was a, a just a disaster going in mm -hmm. 95% of the projects that I work on. Um, it just needs some strategic updates. Um, you, you do those strategic things and, and you're going to see that return. And, and I'm not the kind of, 
person that's going to come in. I, I don't want to renovate just to renovate, right? right. Like it, there, there needs to be a benefit for everybody. Um, for me, I obviously get work um, for the, for the seller. Um, they're going to put that extra money in their pocket. And then for, for you know, the realtor, for the agent, um, they, they get to, to sort of showcase this piece um, and, and say, Hey, listen, this is what I've done for other clients. This is what I can do for you. So it should be a win-win for everybody. I don't right. want to come in and do 50,000 in renovations when, you know, the, 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 the property doesn't support the 50,000 in renovations. Um, I don't I gotta, want to just I do, tell it, you, to Jason, do it. That's what's so impressive about you is, I mean, I, I've worked with a lot of different contractors out there and, you know, I mean, it's just not, it's not uncommon to go over budget over time. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. You know, you'll, you'll hear like this common, like wisdom of whatever the contractor tells you double the time, double the money. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, you've, 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 um, you've been able to hold things like within, you know, and, I, and we always have contingency budgets and things like that, obviously, but you, have to. you keep, th- you keep things incredibly uh, reasonable and, and on schedule. I mean, what, what, what yeah. makes you so different from some of these others? I, I, I didn't start off as a contractor. I started off in the business <laughs> world. Um, but no, I, I think it's just, there, there's there's a lot of great contractors out there. There's a lot of guys that are honest. Some people are just, you know, they want to be order takers. Um, mm. I don't want to be an order taker. I, I want to be that partner with, with you and your clients. Um, yeah. And that means a couple of things. That means, first off, I've got to be organized. And, and that's easy. Like, I, I always joke, like, I'm a professional cat herder. Like, that's, I'm just like... <laughs> figuring out where my guys are and, and, you know, sometimes you have to like spritz them in the face with a little water and, and, but it's like, it's good. Like I've got a good crew that I, I love working with. And and so I've got sort of that team in place that, that helps me keep that, um, keep the schedule. Yeah. But I, I think the second piece is I, I, I'm, I genuinely care about, you know, let's do what's right for you. And, and I don't like, I, I'm not, I just don't want to work to work. Um, yeah. I, I want to work to, to do, what's going to benefit everybody. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know why I'm like that. I just think it's the right thing to do. Um, you know, and, and you talk about change orders and, and budgets. Um, I sort of view it like I I'm definitely not the cheapest contractor out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like to think that when I go in and I'm, I'm doing my bid, I'm as thorough as I can be. Um, and if I tell you a bathroom is going to cost $20,000, that's because it's going to cost $20,000. Right. Um, barring some mistake or uh, barring some, some issue or, or, you know, like we pull the walls out and there's black mold behind the walls. I'm not going to change order you. Um, if I screw up my calculations and I don't, uh, I don't take into account, you know, I, I am short by 30 square feet for tile. Um, that's not your fault. That's my fault. Like, that's just, that's on me. Like, I'm not going to hit you up for something that I screwed up Mm -hmm. now, you know, in some of these older houses, like if I do a project in Highlands Ranch, I'm pretty confident that that we're not going to find anything behind the walls. Um, if I do a house downtown, I'm just going to tell people straight up. I don't think that, like this is the best that I can get with what I can see. Mm-hmm. But when we open this wall up, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to find some stuff. You know, I don't know what the pipes are back there. I don't know anything. And so just be aware. But I, I think it's about communication. Yeah, um, exactly. And again, if they didn't mess up, if this isn't, if, if we're not doing extra work because of something that was wrong with the house, I'm not going to charge you for it. If I missed it, Like that's, yeah. that's sort of, and it kind of, you know, it's burnt me in the past, but it's also made me better. Um, and it's, that's, you got to take your lumps. Um, it, it's not the client's fault. But I, one thing I know about you, Jason, and, and I, it's true for myself as well is, you know, like you, you put a lot of stock into your, your name and your reputation because yeah. you you know that your business is built on referrals and it's built on on that reputation and I, I feel very much the same and so when you when you take care of people and, and do it the right way I mean that that starts to once once that spark is kind of spread a bit like you know that that takes off for you and it it pays you it pays dividends in the end and then like you said towards the beginning it's a win-win for everybody yeah no, I, and that's I think that's the goal is that, that it, I want it to be a win-win for everybody um and you know I, I was meeting with a, a bunch of agents this morning and um one of the one of the guys he's like I'm sorry for asking so many questions I'm like don't apologize like I like 
I'm here to help you out. Like ask as many questions. Now I can't go on every listing appointment with you, but if you got <laughs> questions about something, like give me a call. Like it's, it's no sweat off my back. Like part of my job is helping you guys out. Um, and, and that falls true with your clients. Uh, ironically, you know, and this just sort of goes to show where the value and, and sort of being that, that, the type of person I try to be, and I'm not perfect, but um, the owner or, or the the um, daughter-in-law for the people that bought the house on Chatswood called me today. And they're like, hey, um, we've got some updates that we need to make. We love what you did over there. Can you come over and, and you know, give us a bid on our house? So nice. to your point, it, it, it pays itself forward over time. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, my name is the only thing I have. Yep, absolutely. Well, uh, I know we're, uh, man, we, you know, I know you and I could just talk about this stuff talk for hours, for, uh, dude. hours. So we'll, we'll keep this moving though. Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to picking the right updates, you know, for the highest profit, I, you know, Jason, you and I were kind of joking a little bit about these top 10 renovation lists and all that. And, you know, I, I, I don't take those lightly. Cause I mean, certainly I, I'm sure there's some, there, there's some, uh, credibility to all of those. And I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, say that there's not, but at the same time, you know, some of these things where if you just take them in a vacuum, you know, they, they may not pay off as well as, you know, you may want. So like some of these lists, they'll say like, well, you'll get like maybe 60% of your money back or different things like that. Or, you know, even lists where they're saying like, hey, HVAC is the the number one um, renovation, you know, investment that you can make. And I just study um, sponsored by the HVAC lobby. <laughs> yeah. And so I mean, right, that's like why that's why it's so important to be working with, you know, a, a professional realtor and, and someone like Jason, a contractor that has done this, right. You know, not just for clients, but even for themselves. Cause I mean, you know, when, when, when the meters run in there, like you, you've got to know how to do this and create that value for all sides of this. Like, I mean, you know, you kind of talk about some of the profit that sellers take from this, but like at the end of the day, like you're, you're actually also having to please the buyer. Otherwise they're not handing you that money. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just so key, but, um, I, I guess, uh, yeah, when it comes to, you know, picking some of those right updates, I mean, what are some of the conversations that you're having, uh, with clients, Jason? I mean, it, the, the conversations just vary so wildly. I mean, it's, it's some of these houses you walk into and, um, people are, are prepped and they know exactly what needs to be updated. It's like, Hey, we need to do the kitchen, the bathroom, and you know, we're not going to do anything else. They, they've got, They've got it all down. Um, there's others that I walk into and, and yeah, you know, the agent is over here, um, which is kind of like, I don't know what to do. And the homeowner's pointing every little, like, well, you know, we nicked the wall a little bit here. So we need to fill out. It's like that little Nick isn't what you need to worry about. It's the cabinet that's got red Formica countertops and, you know, like honey oak cabinets. Like that's, that's where your focus needs to be. And so, you know, it just, it depends on the, the conversation. It depends on the house. It depends on the neighborhood. I mean, there, there's some neighborhoods that you can get away with. Frankly, you don't need to do any updates. You, you can sell anything. And there's other neighborhoods that, you know, you, you've got to put some money into this house. And so it, it just, it varies wildly. Um, I, I often get tasked with, uh, with playing bad cop um, and, and the realtors get to be the good cop, right. um, which is okay. I mean, I, I, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not coming in and completely, you know, destroying people, but it, it's, I, I like to have a frank conversation with people. And, and I, um, I, you know, God blessed me to, without a, uh, without a filter. Um, and uh, it, uh, it comes in handy. I've learned how to control it, but, you know, I think there's things that you point out and, and you, you have to sort of change these buyers, I'm sorry, these sellers uh, mindset coming into it. Like you said, it's like, well, why are we renovating? It's like, well, we're not doing this for you directly. We're doing it for you indirectly. We're trying to get, you know, eyes and, and feet through the doors. And, yeah. and the way you do that in this online world is you have something that's beautiful on Instagram mm -hmm. that people can come in and they can, they're, they're spending their time figuring out where they're going to put the couch and where they're going to hang their pictures, not calculating how much going to, how much it's going to cost to get to that point. And so when you, when you kind of describe it to the, to the homeowners, like, Hey, we're, we're going to come in, we're going to do some, we're going to do some quick renovations. It's all cosmetic. It's, it's, it's quick and it's a pretty painless uh, process. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do all the design. Uh, well, I'm not, but thank God, but um, <laughs> you know, my, my designer is going to pick all the finishes. You don't have to do anything except write a check, right? Like that's, that's how easy I want to make it for you. And here's, here's the benefit to doing that. 
then things kind of start clicking and and everybody watches HGTV. It's like, well, you're, you're essentially getting to flip your own house, right? You don't have to do any of the work. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone sees these days, I mean, you know, who doesn't go to Zillow and check out their, you know, Zestimate value. Right. And, yeah. uh, in a lot of, not, not all, but in a lot of cases, there's the little, you know, here's your cash offer right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And ultimately if people don't know, like what they're going to do is they want to reel you in with that price. Right. But next step, they're going to do an inspection and they're going to mm -hmm. find every way they can to get that number down 50 yep. to a hundred thousand dollars because they want to buy your home. They want to flip it and they want to profit. Um, yeah. You can actually keep that profit in your pocket if you just kind of 100%. follow these steps, right? And, and, and create a plan. And like you said, not everyone not everyone is the right fit. Not every house is the right fit. Not every neighborhood is the no. right fit for, for this program. But for those that, that are, um, you, you don't have to hand off that profit to somebody else. And it doesn't have to be an overwhelming deal. Yeah. I, I've had people that, you know, I go and I do a bid and, you know, twice now, um, I'm like, Hey, we, we don't want to do the updates. It's just a hassle. We're, we're going to move out. Do you want to buy the house? Like, well, I wasn't planning on that, but you know, <laughs> the, just kind of thinking about your list of, of sort of who the buyers are just people that just want to get out. Like they don't yeah. care. And that's, right. that's fine. Like, but yeah. it, there's people that, you know, when you could, when you could put an extra, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 thousand dollars in your pocket. What does that do for you for your next house? You know, what right. what can you now buy for your next property that, that you wouldn't be able to buy today? And so there, there's just so many different ways. Or put eighty thousand dollars in the bank or or pay off debt or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but that's real money, well, you know, like when you're talking yeah. tens of thousands of dollars, I mean that's 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 material, that's a, a material amount of money. And I'm not a I'm not a tax expert, but uh, you know that that money's uh, depending on how long you've been in the property and and how much uh, how much equity you've got and how much it's grown over the years. Um, you know that's eighty thousand dollars. It's not you know fifty thousand dollars after taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on uh, yeah, what not uh, not a, not what in the account. It is. <laughs> Neither of us are going to claim to be CPA, right? So, no, no. Um, but yeah, uh, let's let's jump um, to this next one if I can get it to move here. Um, yeah, I mean, this was I think a great example. Uh, you know, we we had a few examples here. Another one where I mean, same building, same square footage, you know, and and footprint, same beds and baths, all that fun stuff. And yet, yeah. um, you know, I mean, there's just such a huge difference. And and it, you know, it, like we said, it's not it's not it's not for everybody. But um, oh. when you when you're when you're willing to just at least explore this, you know, for some people it's like, man, that's actually not too bad. You're you're gonna be in and out of here in four weeks. Like, yep. I think I can do that for you know, in this case, you know, uh, pretty pretty good uh, penny. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, so this is I think something that really surprises a lot of people, Jason. And we've got several different ways of of kind of doing this, but I think a lot of people, you know, they're just worried about, man, I just. I, I'm trying to buy a new house. I'm trying to get out of this house and buy a new house and have a down payment. And hey, by the way, I've got financing for that next house. Like, how am I going to pay for all this? You know, um, and and you know, in this process, and that's where we've really made things easier. We've got several options. I mean, you know, to skip to the bottom, like if you want to fund it yourself, that's absolutely possible. You can avoid, you know, some of the additional financing fees, different, you know, things like that. But if you really want to take advantage of this, I mean, if you're going to profit $50,000, I mean, some of the, you know, like this option one, 8Z, we have a program where we'll actually pay for all the renovations up front up to $20,000. And then you pay back the $20,000 plus $1,000 convenience fee uh, at closing. And I mean, if if you're going to be making, you know, um, that kind of money, you know, like some of the profits on this that we've talked about. Um, that's a pretty small price to pay. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you, Jason, but like I'll yeah. trade a thousand dollars for 30,000 any day, you know, any day of the week and probably twice on Sunday. Right. So, but yeah, even I don't better, know how you say no to it, but, <laughs> but even better, me. there's the financing options, right. Of, yeah. of you know, no, yeah. uh, if you're approved, obviously, but no interest, no payments. Um, yeah. any, anything else to add on that option to there? Jason? Yeah, no. So, so this is our financing program. It's a, an in-house program through renovation cells. Um, but yeah, we, we've partnered with, uh, slice. It, it's a, a, 
financing program through the First National Bank of Omaha, but it, essentially uh, you can get approved up to eighty thousand um, dollars in, in renovations. Uh, we have the way that it works is you get approved. Um, you don't get a check. Um, I, I work with them on the back end, and I, I just request the draws based on how the contract's written up. Um, and so I'll get you know ten thousand in the beginning, and, and then just at certain milestones, whatever the case may be. Um, but uh, after the project's complete, um, then that six month window starts, and so it's you know six months, no interest, no payment. Um, and so the theory is we renovate the house, um, you sell the house, and then um, sometime within that six month window, you pay the bank back, um, and uh, and you're good to go. If you don't pay the loan off after six months, it just converts to a standard amortized loan, um, and you know the details about that are available on our website. But um, yeah, it, it's a great way to to do. Um, some pretty significant renovations and, and not have to come out of pocket at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, you look at some of those renovation timelines that you had in there. I mean, you were measuring them in weeks, you know, so yeah. six months, yeah. uh, plenty of time to get all that done. Oh, a hundred percent. And, and, and frankly, you know, if, if you've got a house that, that's beautiful, um, if you can't have it sold um, within about, uh, 30 days or, or 45 days, you know, call it 60 days nowadays. Um, if you can't have it, it sold and, and out of, out of your possession in two months, um, there, there's something, something bigger going on. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah, plenty of time to get everything paid off. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, a lot of the, the common, you know, seller concerns that we run into, we've, we've kind of, um, touched on, uh, I, I think all of these, um, you know, along the way, and they're they're completely valid. They're they're completely valid concerns and and questions that you should be asking. You know, heading into a, a program or a strategy like this. And you know, the the good news is, I mean, this is not just like this is not just some you know harebrained idea that Jason and I you know concocted two weeks ago. I mean, this this has yeah. been running for a while. Like people are doing this. People were doing this unofficially on their own. You know, before yeah. this. I mean, this is not renovating your house to sell it for top dollar is nothing new. It's just no. now it's, it's a program that you can step into and say yes to, and you, you aren't actually the one that's responsible for it all because Jason and his team come in, my, me and my team come in, we help with our expertise and in, in consulting. And we're, we're making sure that you are doing the right things to actually get the result that you want without all the headaches. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we we've got. I was the the fourth franchisee uh, with renovation cells, and that was uh, almost three years ago. Um, I think we're up to fifty some odd locations now. Um, wow, that quickly. Yeah, um, it, it's something that that's really taking off, um, and and sort of having that that all encompassing. You know, we do the design, we do the uh, material um, selections. Um, and, and by the way, part of the reason we can be so fast is when we're selecting materials, everything we select is in stock. So we don't have to worry about stuff that's got a seven month or seven week lead time. It's it's all in stock and it's available. Um, but then um, um, I lost my train of thought, but the electrician just texted me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing everything right. So, yeah. so if you can trust us and hand it off to us, it, it's, it, it's a, it's a simple process that, um, really just benefits. There's such a benefit for the, for the homeowners, um, yeah. financially. Absolutely. And it, you guys are doing such great work. It's, it's ultimately a ben benefit for the buyer too, because they're walking into something that they oh, can yeah. actually know was done well. It's it's everything they they you know kind of dreamed of so yeah I mean it's yeah. that it's that win 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 so totally um, yeah I mean you know we talked about this before but a lot of people are just kind of like well you you know you just kind of declutter and you know take some pictures and throw it on the the MLS and you're all done right but mm -hmm. you really want to knock this out of the park if you want to see some of the profits that you know that are that you know we kind of talk through and all that i mean there, there's a process to this and and that's where when you bring in professionals like jason and myself and others um you know it's gonna be a process i mean you, you know we've probably all heard the cliche of you know when a 
when a plane takes off from, you know, LA going to New York, you know, like they're, they're going through all these checklists, the books and books of checklists and making sure yeah. that along the way, like, you know, that they're kind of getting there and, and making adjustments and, and all that, like a true professional is going to run it that way every time, because if you don't, and you're just kind of going blind, like you're going to end up in Miami instead of New York. Right. So, um, and it only takes a few degrees at the beginning there of going off course and, and suddenly yeah. you're lost. So yeah, I yeah. mean, planning is such a massive part of this and does it take a little more time? Yeah. But, um, it, you know, kind of some of that, uh, old wisdom of, you know, slow down to speed up. Right. Yep. No, hundred percent. And to your point, um, with, yeah, you, you, you have to do a little bit of planning and, and this isn't for every buyer, but for those that, that have a little bit of time, I mean, you, I'm sure you've had people that call you up and like, Hey, I, I, I just got you know relocated. We got to mm -hmm. go even in those situations um, because it's sort of the way that we work. So I, I keep my, my calendar pretty flexible um, because I know that the realtors work on, on, on tight timeframes. Everyone who wants their house sold last week. Um, <laughs> but I, I can generally get out to bid a project, um, within a day or two. Um, mm -hmm. if it's nothing crazy, I mean, it, some of these big projects, it takes me a little bit of time, but I can usually turn a, a bid around in 24 to 48 hours. Right. So, you know, I come out on Monday, I can have you a bid by Wednesday, um, and, and if the clients are truly motivated and they're like, Hey, let's do this. Um, I go out on Thursday and I do a quick matter port of the property, you know, after they sign the contract. Um, and I can generally start within about two weeks of the clients, um, signing, uh, signing the contract. Um, so if you think about it, it's, it's really, we're talking six to eight weeks, um, which is kind of, I mean, that's, general i don't know i don't know what what's your time frame if somebody calls you and says hey we, we want to sell our house like you're still unless they've got that house just ready to go um yeah. it's not you know like you you list it tomorrow yeah i mean it's is it possible to list it tomorrow i mean certainly you can but yeah it just goes back to like what are your what's your goal right like what, yeah. what do you what do you need out of this i mean uh i mean i had one in lakewood where you know i mean we started planning that back in november you know and yeah. Um, and they did the work, they, they put the work in and, you know, clean it up and, you know, just some of the touch-ups and everything it was already in great shape, but, you know, they yeah. just did those small things. Um, I had my stager come in and, you know, um, the stager just always kind of puts the bow on, on top, right. Where it's just like, oh man, yep. that, that just photographs so well. And I, you know, I mean, I, I kind of jokingly put in, you know, staging, staging, staging for presentation. And there's certainly yeah. more to, to all of this, um, uh, that, you know, we just don't have time to go into, but, um, but yeah, that all that planning, the prep, you know, getting it renovated, decluttering, deep cleaning, and then staging it right. Um, you do it right. It, it does take a little bit more time, but the, the results uh, speak for themselves because you're not, you know, stressing about it because it's not sitting on the market for yeah. you know, weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, you're, you're getting the deal done and you're moving on. Well, and I'll give my, my stage where I use pineapple interiors. They're, they're amazing. Um, and they're not cheap. Uh, we, we paid $3,700 to stage, uh, that house on Chatswood. Mm -hmm. uh, but we staged every single room in that house again, because the presentation, um, yeah. I, I look at sort of what we do with renovations is like the canvas and, and staging is the actual art. Mm -hmm. Um, because without a good stager, um, it, the, the, the renovations, I mean, you could have amazing renovations done yeah. and then they stage it with stuff that just doesn't fit. Um, and it doesn't fit the, it doesn't fit the property. And so staging is, is I think a, an under um, appreciated aspect of, of listing. Yeah. Even if you're not doing a full stage, I mean, you, you can get stagers to come in and, and, you know, they'll, they'll take a look and say, Hey, let's, let's put some pillows here and let's do some stuff here with your existing furniture. Um, mm -hmm such value in, in doing that as well. Yeah. I think people don't realize, um, the, the, like the actual return you get on, you know, staging and there's actually been some really good studies done that if anyone's interested, I'll, I'll fire them away, you know, to you. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's literal, uh, studies done on, on how homes will sell for more like a mm -hmm. higher price and faster than homes that are not staged. And it, it's just, um, it's kind of proven over and over again. So yeah, don't ever look at that as like, oh man, it's just yet another expense. It's definitely an investment yeah. that you'll you'll see it come back to you. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Agree more. 
So, uh, Jason, let's wrap this thing up. Um, you know, as far as next steps, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, let's go back and forth on this, but I mean, I think a big one is like decide on that goal, the timeline, the priorities, because a renovation yeah. just may not be the right fit. Right. But yeah. uh, you're not going to know that until you really decide like what, what is the most important thing to me? And, and even on time, you know, like things can still happen fast and, and still get a good profit, but you've got to know, you've got to explore that and and really go in knowing what your priorities are. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, as with anything in life, the, the more you yeah. can prepare um, and, and the more you, you sort of map things out um, and don't get me wrong, I'm a shoot from the hip type guy a lot. Um, but there's, there's certain things, especially, I mean, the house is the biggest, the biggest investment most people will ever have. Right. Um, spend a little bit of time to just slow down and think about what you want to do and, and how you want to do it. Um, and if you've, if you've got an opportunity to, to, you know, do some renovations or do whatever to maximize that price, it's something that you should seriously consider. Um, yeah. But to your point, it's not for everybody. Um, yeah. And so bare minimum, just sit down and, and, and find the right agent, you know, somebody like Jacob that will have those conversations with you. I think, uh, you know, this will be a shameless plug for, for Jacob. Um, but you know, a lot of agents, they just want that sale. And, and that's all they care about is I'll say whatever I have to do. Yeah. You want to get 700,000 for your house. I'll get you 700,000 for your house. Um, when in reality, you're only going to get 600 for it, but they're just going to tell you whatever to get that listing. And then you have that, that slide um, of you start reducing the price and reducing the price back to where it would have gone originally. Yeah. Um, so, so find a good agent, the agent's the quarterback, um, the, the agent's going to have a lender. They're going to have a contractor. They're going to have a stager. They're going to have a photographer. They're going to have title. They're, they're going to have all these people, but if you don't have the right quarterback, you know, you, 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 you pay him $80 million over two years to play in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh man, Jason shot, uh, shot has been fired. <laughs> I'm Browns fan. <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's so key. And you know, whether whether it's Jason and I, I mean, there's like you mentioned before, there's 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 some great there's great contractors Tons. out there. There's some great realtors out there. You know, um, we happen to be a little bit biased, uh, you know, to to our businesses, of course. But um, but yeah, I mean, if if this can be a, a of any education to you and and just help you in your journey, um, yep. you know, then that's that's um, that that's great. And that's we we want to be helpful out there. So. Um, you know, definitely consult with your team, you know, and decide, just look through the options. I, I think that's, you know, something that, you know, maybe too many of us um, do, right, is whether it, we're talking about a renovation or anything else in life is just kind of assuming something. And if you don't have all the information, um, that assumption can really can really cost you. So, um, yeah. you know, definitely uh, have those consultations. That's, you know, where if you want to, you know, chat with Jason, chat with myself, um, please uh, reach out, give us a call, shoot us a text you know, whatever makes sense. Um, and Jason, your, your website is renovationcells.com, correct? Yep. Just renovationcells.com. Uh, um, yeah, you can so, go, you can see all of our work. You can, there's a bunch of before and afters, uh, financing information's out there as well. So yeah. Yeah. Please and as, I mean, as you can all see, I mean, Jason's a super approachable guy. Um, you know, he's not, he's not one of those guys that wants to talk over your head with, you know, um, uh, a lot of jargon or anything like that. So you're going to have a really good conversation with him. And he's, he's a straight shooter. He's going to tell you, you know, um, if this is a, a, a good job, or, you know, a, a good, a good uh, opportunity or not. Um, you know, that's my goal as well as to, you know, just uh, kind of lay out the facts, lay out really good information and let you make the decisions. So um, Jason, that was fun, man. That, that went, that was awesome. And I was thinking, but um, you know, like we said, we can just kind of get going on these things. It's such a good topic and it's just so so relevant in today's market. So um, thank you so much for, for joining me with this. Absolutely. No, I appreciate the uh, the invite. We'll have to do it again. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Uh, yeah, please reach out to Jason, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to chatting with you.